Good morning! Sa araw na ito, ating ipagpapatuloy ang ating napasimulang series from Luke chapter 6 about the skills of interpersonal relationship among the disciples. Remember that we're done with the first part of the series about the disciples' connection with others o ang pakipagkapwa tao ng mga alagad at ng mga Kristiyan. We are all sinners and as a result, our relationship with God is broken. But because God is a God of relationship, God has sent Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, to be our mediator from our broken relationship with God. So Jesus is our way to God. Dahil ang Diyos ay Diyos ng ugnayan, marapat lamang na tayo bilang mga alagad, bilang mga Kristiyano, ay magbigay ng pahalaga sa pangyipagkapwa-tao. Here are the recap of the last message. First, the non-retaliation and non-violence as interpersonal skills for the disciples and Christians in verses 27 to 31. Secondly, the good works as motivated by mercy as interpersonal skills for the disciples and Christians in verses 32 to 36. Third, the treat others as you want to be treated as interpersonal skills for the disciples and Christians in verses 37 to 38. Ang bunga ng mensahe ng pagkapwa-tao ay nagpapalaya. Freedom to love the ungrateful. Freedom to do good works with the undeserving and the freedom to show mercy equally. Ang pagsasapamuhay ng mensahe ng pagkipagkapwa-tao ay ang paghahasik ng kapayapaan. Spread peace when there is conflict. Spread peace when there is hate. Spread peace when there is violence. Today, we will move forward to the second part of the series that deals with the disciples' connection with themselves. From Luke chapter 6, verse 20 to 26, And, and verses 39 to 45. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will love. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil, because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and live for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But who to you who are rich, for you have been already received your comfort. Who to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Who to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Who to you when everyone speaks well of you, For that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. He also told them this parable, Can the blind lead the blind? They will not both fall into a pit. The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sodas in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plunk in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye. When you yourselves fail to see the plank in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from the turn bushes or grapes from briars. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Ating balangkasin ang mga minsahe ng Panginoong Sokristo patungkol sa the disciples' interpersonal skills that deals with self-connection. In verses 39 to 42, Jesus has instructed his disciples to guard themselves against 
hypocrisy. Ang pagkukunwari ay hindi dapat nakikita sa pagkatao ng mga alagad ni Kristo. Ang pagbabalad kayo ay hindi dapat namamalas sa buhay at pagkatao ng mga Kristiyano. You are a disciple of Christ. You are a Christian. Get rid of hypocrisy and clothe yourselves with honesty and sincerity as a skill for self-connection. Paano natin may sasalarawan ang hypocrisy? Halimbawa po sa Facebook. Kayo nga ay friend pero naka-unfollow ka naman. Merong tinatawag na disconnection at yan ay hypocrisy. Kapag kakaharap mo, pinupuri ka nga, pero pag nakatalikod naman, sinisiraan ka. There is deception. Yan po ay isang hypocrisy. Critical nga, pero opinionated naman. Magaling mga ako pero kulang sa gawa. Yan ay duplicity. Ang tawag po dyan ay hypocrisy. There are three illustrations that Jesus has used to explain the problem of hypocrisy such as the blind leader o ang bulag na tagapanguna, ang tinatawag na the master and the student o ang guro at ang mag-aaral, at ang sodas in the eye o ang uwin sa kanyang mata. To get rid of hypocrisy sa pagsalarawan ng blind leader, we don't want to be a blind guide. Isang malaking kasinungalingan sa sarili at kapahamakan na tayo ay mga bulag na tagapanguna. Kung hindi natin alam ang tamang daan, then we must stop pretending to be a leader. Halimbawa, ugaliin natin mag-verify ng mga news na atin pong ibinabahagi. We have to verify the news if it is fake or legitimate or genuine. Dahil kasi kapag tayo ay naging spreader ng mga fake news, then we could be qualified as a blind guy, then that is a qualified hypocrisy. To get rid of hypocrisy sa pagsasalarawan ng the master and the student, we must remain a learner. Isang malaking pagkukunwari sa ating mga sarili na palagi nating iniisip at palagi nating pakaramdam na alam natin ang lahat. Huwag tayong magmarunong na feeling know it all. Rather, we must be teachable. Meron tayong role na entitled tayo sa ating personal opinion. Pero kapag ka masyado tayong druggy, and insisting with our own opinion na piling natin ito ang tama, ito ang perfect, kapag merong sumalungat sa atin ay magagalit tayo ay atawayin natin, then it is a qualified hypocrisy. To get rid of hypocrisy sa pagsasalarawan ng sodas in the eye, we take care of our own fault. Isang malaking pangdaraya sa ating mga sarili na palagi yan natin nakikita ang kamalian ng ibang tao, pero hindi natin nakikita ang kamalian natin sa ating mga sarili. Huwag tayong magmalinis. Our priority is self-examination before we examine others' fault. Madalas, napapasama po tayo. Tayo po ay napapasali sa tinatawag na blame game. Magaling po tayong magsisihan at wala po tayong pamalayan sa pag-ako o pag-amin kapag meron pong kapalpakan. Pagkaganyan po ang case, then it's a qualified hypocrisy. In verses 43 to 45, Jesus has reminded His disciples to watch out their languages or those words that comes out of their mouth. Ang mga foul words ay hindi dapat naririnig sa mga alagad ni Kristo. Ang mga destructive words ay hindi dapat naririnig sa mga Kristiyano. You are a disciple of Christ. You are a Christian. You must be mindful of the words that you use. You have to be very tactful because it's an important skill for self-connection. Words are powerful tools or force 
that we could use in our everyday life. Halimbawa po, dahil sa isang post sa Facebook, nasira ang friendship. Dahil sa isang Twitter post, nagdulot ng division, you know, watch out. Because words can be destructive. Minsan dahil sa magandang preaching, dahil sa magandang speeches na narinig ng mga tao, nagdulot ng pag-asa, nagdulot ng kaliwanagan, it is true na ang mga salita po ay edifying. There are two comparisons that Jesus has used to explain the importance of the words. The illustration of the tree and the fruit o yung puno at bunga, and the saying that the mouth speaks what the heart is full of, o yung sapagkat sa kasaganaan ng puso ay nagsasalita ang kanyang bibig. The importance of words and language sa paghalintulad ng puno at bunga, ibig sabihin, we are what we say. The true identity of a person can be known by the fruit of his or her tongue. You know, if you want to know people, you have to listen to their words at makikilala nyo po sila. Logically, good words will come out to those who are good in their heart. Logically, evil words will come out from an evil heart of a person. Halimbawa, kung ang isang tao ay pabalang magsalita, hindi ba siya ay branded na walang education o wala po siyang manners? Halimbawa, kapag ang salita ng isang tao ay kontra-kontra, ang kanyang salita ay salus-salungat, hindi ba siya ay labeled na mambobola o kaya siya ay labeled na sinungaling? Halimbawa, kapag ang isang tao ang kanyang mga pananalita ay very inspirational, patungkol po sa Diyos at very godly, hindi ba tinatawag natin siyang very religious person? The importance of words and languages sa kasabihan ng the mouth speaks what the heart is full of, ang ibig sabihin po nito ay our speeches exposes our inner self. What from the inside will outflow in the outside? Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Halimbawa, kapag ka po ang post ng isang tao ay hugot, sa social media, hindi ba ang tawag natin o pagkakilala natin sa tao na yan na nag-post ng hugot post ay naku, ang tao yan ay merong pinagdadaanan. Halimbawa, nakakita tayo ng post ng isang tao sa social media na rant. Naku, alam natin ang saloobin ng tao yan na nag-post ng rant posting. Yan ay galit, yan ay asar, yan ay merong kaaway. Halimbawa, nakakita tayo ng post ng isang tao na full of thanksgiving. Siya ay nagpapasalamat. He's so blessed na kung alam natin ang taong yan ay pinagpala. Mukhang may mga pagtugon sa kanyang mga panalangin. In verses 20 to 26, Jesus has encouraged His disciples to understand the blessedness of following and believing Him as their Lord and Master. Happiness and satisfaction ang pangako ng Panginoong Isokristo para sa kanyang mga alaga. Happiness and satisfaction ang pangako ni Kristo para sa mga tunay na Kristiyano. You are a disciple of Christ. You are a Christian. You should see how blessed you are as a skill for self-connection. Minsan naisip natin sa panahon natin, sino ang pinagpala, sino ang aba, o sino ang kawawa. Naisip natin ang mga pinagpala, maybe yung mga tumanggap ng government financial assistance. Minsan naisip natin yung mga locally stranded individual na mga kababayan natin dahil sa pandemic, sila ang aba, sila ang kawawa. Marahil naisip natin yung mga kababayan natin milyong-milyon na nawala ng hanap buhay at trabaho dahil sa crisis, dahil sa pandemic, sila ang aba, sila ang kawawa. Naisip natin ang mga taong pinagpala sa panahon natin yung bang COVID-19 free. Naisip natin 
na ang mga taong mapalad sa mga panahon natin ngayon kung saan ang kanilang simbahan, ang kanilang ministry, kahit lockdown, ay nagpapatuloy through online. But Jesus has laid down in His preaching the blessedness of being a disciple as opposed to the misery of those non-follower and believer. Blessed are you who are poor as a disciple and sad are the rich non-follower and believer. Blessed are you who hunger as a disciple and sad are the well-fed non-follower and believer. Blessed are you who weep as a disciple and sad are the joyful non-follower and believer. Blessed are you who are persecuted as a disciple and sad are those who speaks well of non-follower and believer. Totoo at tunay, ang mga Kristiyano, ang mga disipulo, ay makakaranas ng pagkahirap, makakaranas ng pagkaguto, makakaranas ng pagdadalamhati, makakaranas ng pag-uusik. But in spite of this, ipinangako sa atin ng Panginoon So Kristo, tayo pa rin ay mapalad. Now, let's understand the paradox of the blessedness of being a disciple and Christian. First, the blessedness of being a disciple and Christian ay maunamaan lamang natin in the context of the kingdom of God. Halimbawa, the disciples and Christian will experience poverty and sacrifices dahil sa pagsunod at pananampalataya nila sa Diyos. But they are blessed for the kingdom of God is with them. Nagihirap man, kinalulugdan naman ng Diyos. May sakripisyo man, nasa kalooban naman ng Diyos. Ako po, personally, ay graduate ng Electronics Communication Engineering. But I left my profession in order to pursue the full-time ministry. I'm happy and uh, peaceful kahit po marami pong pag-iis at marami pong sakripisyo dahil alam ko na sinunod ko ang tawag ng Diyos sa aking buhay. Dahil tinaha ko ang kalooban ng Diyos sa aking pong buhay. Secondly, the blessedness of being a disciple and a Christian ay maunawaan lamang natin between the time frame of earthly temporal and the heavenly eternal. Sa ngayon at dito sa mundo, ang mga disciples and Christians ay dadaan sa mga pagtitiis, dadaan sila sa mga pagdadalamhati, subalit sa pangwalang hanggang kalalagayan kung saan kapiling nila ang Diyos, they will rejoice and they will be rewarded of their faithfulness and of their obedience. Here and now, sa mundo ngayon, the disciples and Christians will experience hunger, will experience loneliness, will experience persecution due to their faith and their obedience. But the people who are not God-fearing and without Christ will be well-fed, joyful, and praised for. But in the then and there, listen to me, sa pangalawang buhay, sa pangwalang hanggang kapiling ang ating pong Panginoon, the disciples and Christians will be satisfied, will be commended, will be happy because of their endurance and faithfulness with God. But the people who are not God-fearing and without Christ will go hunger, mourning, and condemnation. Ang mga disciples at Christian, hirap now, blessed later. Ang mga disciples at Christians, tiis now, blessed later. Pero ang mga walang takot sa Diyos at walang Kristo, blessed now, pero sabi later. The disciples and the Christians will carry their cross now, but in the future, at the end times, they will carry their crown. Today, the disciples and the Christians will have so much pain, but later, they will gain. Sacrifice now, 
pay back later. As I end, here is the outline of the message today. As a disciples and a Christians, our attitude towards self should be honest and sincere. Tactful, being mindful of our words, and to feel blessed of the then and there of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Panginoon, tulungan mo kami mais sa pamuhay ang minsaing narinig po namin sa araw na ito. Tulungan mo kami maging totoo sa aming pong mga sarili. Tulungan mo kami maging maingat sa aming pong mga bagbita. Tulungan mo kami panawin ang aming mga sarili na mga pinagpalang bilang mga alagad at bilang mga Kristiyan. Tulungan mo kami maisa pamuhay ang bawat salitang aming tinanggap sa araw na ito. Pinagkakatiwala po namin sa inyo ang mga panibagong araw sa isang bagong linggo sa aming buhay. Masumpungan po namin ang inyo pong biyay. Masumpungan po namin ang inyo pong pagpapala. Masumpungan po namin ang inyo pong paggabay sa aming pong mga buhay. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord shall turn His face towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Probably, saan mag-